and I don't consider the church to be the body of Christ. I figure the body, I, I count the body of Christ mother the pe people that are really saved. People that have believed the gospel, uh, they have believed the gospel and uh, have been uh, translated by the spirit into the body of Christ, an act of God. I think there's certain things that you need to believe in order to be on the right path. The first thing that you have to understand is, is that God does not operate um, with you. God does not ask for your help. God does not um, need you in order for him to do anything. And because of, and just, just think about the many misconceptions in the practice of the church because of that. Because we think that God need us in order for people to be saved. Uh, one thing we do is, is that we use up an inordinate amount of time in the church trying to persuade and beg people to be saved. When actually, salvation is a work of the spirit. Now, Sister Cynthia, behind all of this is a world of ignorance and superstition. Because the people that are supposed to be teaching us, our instructors, have not studied the Bible, then, uh, I mean, it's just like, have you ever had a product and didn't read the instructions? I do it all the time. I do it all the time. I just found out I've had that Equus since 2017. Lady Dapper, and I just found out that the heads on display, you know, shows how, how fast you're going and different stuff on the mirror up there, that there are fonts on it, and you can change how big it is. But all of these things I would have known if I had read the instructions to uh, the product. It's the same way about God. Uh, God has left us a manual. He's, he's left us definite you know, somebody called me yesterday, was asking me a question. They, don't, they won't call me anymore, but they called me, wanted to talk to me about the Bible, and he said, I just want your opinion. And I said, I don't give my opinion. I said, I give you scriptures. Well, everybody have, I said, no. I said, the scripture, if I take it for what it says, I said, now there's certain obvious parts that are similes or metaphors or just, uh, you know, examples. Like he said, that God will hide you up under his wings. Of course, God don't have no wings, but you understand that he's making an example. But when God says that you are saved by grace, that means no works. No works. I'm glad that God, I started pastoring when I was 49, I'm 65 now, 16 years. I'm glad for these 16 years, uh, Cricket, because I have a better understanding now than when I started. And I need a better understanding in order to instruct you. And it's clear to me now that anything that God does does not include you. You are the beneficiary. Beneficiary, you're the beneficiary, said right there, of his uh, benevolence. Because God is a love, then God gives you what he wants you to have, not what you deserve. He gives you what he wants you to have out, out of his love. And when we allow God uh, to guide us, then we operate out of love, not our human love. My human love is, that's how I get my heart broken, out of my human love. Because you see, the things I do, I do it with expectations. I do it, I do it expecting you to be what I want you to be. And when inevitably you disappoint me, then my heart is broken. But when I simply love you because I love you, then that's the love of God. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not capable of that. I'm not capable of that. Uh, and that's what happens when you have pastors who make efforts to try to make persons in the, in the church do like they want them to do. And inevitably, they don't do like they want them to do. Then the pastor ends up being petty. He ends up treating you like you treat him. 
and it short circuits and it and it ruins and it destroys his purpose and his ministry and so what i realize today robert is is that i'm here for the right purpose tonight i'm here for a better life i'm here for a better life and i don't care what anybody said life is hard life is hard i thank god for him leaving an instruction booklet on how to live successfully. And the thing about it is, you know, it wasn't Isaiah, but it was the staple singers that said, you're going out the world backwards like you did when you first came here. Most people are so stupid, they stupid to the fact they stupid. They stupid to the fact they stupid. You out here shooting, you out here doing all kind of things and everything, when the chickens come home to roost frat and you get shot, then you think, oh my God, they done done me wrong. Don't be wrong. But that's how human beings are. We want to talk tonight in 2 Corinthians. Uh, when Paul goes to 2 Corinthians, he gets very personal. And really, you don't know anybody unless they get personal with you. You, you got, sometimes we have parents. Uh, uh, my parents were like this right here. Uh, uh, they came from a generation where you didn't get common with children. And so really what I had to learn about certain stuff and everything, I had to learn it in the street. Because my mom and dad wasn't going to talk to you about certain things. Now, I don't know if that was better or what Lady Deborah and I tried to do. We tried to change it, and that didn't work either, did it, baby? Uh, but you really don't know a person until you know them. If people only let you talk to them on the surface, if they only give you what they want you to have or uh, uh, whatever, and then that, that's all they got to give you. And so Paul in 1 Corinthians, y'all remember 1 Corinthians where the churches, Paul had gone and he had set up all these churches. And you know what? Anything that you have gonna bring you some problems. I, I don't care what it is, I wanna be married, okay, okay, okay. I want a car, okay, okay, okay. I want a job, okay, okay. Anything in this world, that you have, it's gonna bring you some problems. But you see, God teaches us, Robert, how to deal with the problems of life. You see, they had me in church frat trying to be saved. I was saved before I came to them. God did that by himself. If I hadn't been saved, I wouldn't have been coming to church because I just didn't, I had better things to do than to be a part of y'all social club. I did, I had some better friends. They, 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 would, they treated me better than folks up in church did. Uh, but when it came to how to live among Negroes, how, how, to, how to navigate in family, and, and, and the, the challenge, I don't know if some of y'all like me, my challenge today is not so much sin as it is not being petty. I want to act up all the time. I, I want to act up. I do. I want to, when you, you know, you agitate me or you don't, I, you, you know, I know you, you slick hating. I know you slick trying to, but I want to give it to you just like you giving it because I think I can give it to you better than what you're doing. And that's my challenge because when you get petty, you defeat the purpose that God has in your life. And so Paul has set these churches up. And they, Lady Deborah, send somebody to him to tell him about all the problems. You have been doing all right, and somebody just came to you and just brought all their problems and brought all this. Come on, y'all. I mean, because you carry yourself in a certain way, Cricket, they think that you, I know all black women know that y'all supposed to be the, the martyr you're supposed to be, and then you end up with a martyr complex. Can't nobody tell you nothing because you done took the family from where they was to where they are and everything. And so they come to Paul and they bring all these problems. We got a, a man, we got a boy here that's sleeping with his dad, his wife. Uh, we got divisions. We got a church where can't nobody tell them nothing. One said they of Paul, one said they of Apollos. He, he, he got all these problems going on. And, but, but in 2 Corinthians, it takes a turn. I, I love the Bible. Because the Bible, I have my answers to life there. In 2 Corinthians, Paul says, okay, y'all got problems, but what I need you to know is I got problems too. 
Well, I need you to know that if I don't take care of me, I'm not going to be able to take care of anybody else. You, you ever tried to make sure everybody was, I, I know you, I got the right folks here. I got a whole lot of black mamas up in there. You ever tried to take care of everybody and then you just come to the thing? Maybe that's why black mamas are holler out sometime, I'm going to leave all of y'all and your daddy. I'm going to leave you. And they, they, please don't leave us with daddy. Please don't leave us with daddy, because what daddy be cooking is a crying shame. It tastes all right the first day, but he gonna cook the same thing the next day. Thank you, Jesus. So Paul here in 2 Corinthians gets personal with us. And those are the kind of relationships, Sister Cynthia, I try to nurture. Those surface relationships don't do me any good. Because you see, everybody has a story, and everybody has something that will help you. But, but will they share it with you? Jesus said this, he said, greater love have no man than this, then he will lay down his life for his brother. When you cut yourself open and you tell me the truth, tell me the truth, and the truth is, Lady Deborah, life for me ain't been no crystals that way. Ain't none of us hit a hundred. Okay, you see where I am now, but baby, the stumbling and the falling and the stuff that they took for me to get here now, some people, some people, watch this. Uh, I spoke at somebody's graduation the other week. And you know, some people don't know what to say. And that's when you need to be led by God by who you get to speak at your, your different stuff. Cricket, this woman got up and gonna tell about all the missteps and the mess up that the woman did. Everybody, by the time she got through, everybody had their head down. You drug down the whole situation. You see what I'm saying? Uh, it's a process, and the process isn't pretty where God is taking me. But also something that I always have to understand is, is that God is yet in control. Just because things are, are, are messed up and whatever. Because you see, God has to help you so you can help other folk. If you ain't never, that God deliver me from folk that ain't never had no trouble. God deliver me from folk that ain't never messed up. God deliver me from folk that I, well, I just don't understand how, how come y'all can't get along? I, I don't want you to say y'all saved, look like y'all shouldn't have these problems or whatever. I need somebody to tell me the truth. They say, yes, we're getting ready to celebrate 42 years of marriage, but brother, the picture ain't been pretty. It has not been just a heavenly all the way, but God. And you see, what I believe, Brother Alex, is, is that God orchestrates things where he always gets the glory. Because if you tell the truth, you'll say, if it had not been for God in the midst of this, it never would have lasted if it had not been for God because we were at our last and ready to give up. And God held us with his mercy and his grace. So Paul here in 2 Corinthians, he starts to talk to the Corinthians. And you see, well, one thing, I try to be real with everybody I talk to so I can get the fakers away from me. And one thing about it is people... Uh, will stay around you as long as they getting something. But when it comes your turn to get some help and everything, you turn around and you don't see many folks around. Uh -huh, uh -huh. And so Paul says, okay, y'all want to disturb my peace. Y'all want to disturb my life about what's going on with y'all. Let me tell you something about real life. Because I want you to know some real life shows up. And when you love people, my heart is heavy for Brother Brimley because he just lost his second child. Now, you can say, well, you know, God took him because he loved him, but that's his child. He loved his child just like you love yours. Oh. Dorothy, that used to go to church here, Dorothy gave me a lesson in that that I'll never forget. Dorothy was talking about, she was a clean, she was a maid over there at the casino. And she was talking about they was getting ready to do lay off and all this right here. Well, you know, I hadn't been too long, got to be a little lawyer and everything, driving luxury cars, you know, that gate got money and all this right here. And I'm like, well, you know, that's, you find another like that. And she stopped me. And I never forget, Fred, what she told me. She said, Valna, I think just as much about my job as you think about yours. You think she didn't help me? Because many times we will overlook people. God, our only purpose here, y'all, 
is to help other people. I will only pray. If you're ever going to have a fulfilled uh, life, I feel sorry for folks that don't have children, that don't have grandchildren, that don't have family, that, 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 that don't. Oh, yes. Oh, oh, they, they give you pure DL sometimes. You wish sometimes you didn't even have that. You sometimes lay down, you say, who child is this? But it's funny what God does and what he uses in order to make us. And so Paul here, 2 Corinthians, let me get started. Paul says in the first chapter, he says, Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, by the will of God. Y'all see this theme? How that you don't get anywhere, you don't do anything on your own. These apostles that they got now making themselves apostles. That's the reason they don't know nothing. Because if God made you an apostle, you would have a message. You would have a message that had nobody else heard because he used the apostles to speak the word of God because they didn't have a Bible. And every word that they spoke was straight from God. But folks just want a title, but that's self. And you see, the, the thing about it is, until you get connected with God, the very thing that'll help you is what you run from. You run from humility, not knowing that humility is the only key that will open the door to grace. And grace is the only thing that will help you because you can't help yourself. Ain't none of us going to go to church long enough to be strong. Ain't none of us going to go to church long enough where we don't mess up. Or we don't say what we shouldn't say. Or God, go where we shouldn't go. Or do what we wouldn't do. It's just not within me. And Paul told the truth in Romans the seventh chapter. He said, "Look, he said the things that I say I'm not going to do. I find my every time I seek to do good, evil is present. Who shall deliver me from the body of death? Your only hope is God. We don't come to church and we don't told you that yo you can help yourself. See how we mess you up." You cannot do any better than your instructions. No wonder our Lady Deborah and I was on the verge of divorce. No wonder our life was messed. We wasn't getting no kind of instruction. <sighs> and then the thing about it is you have folks that come here and they're getting the instruction, but they don't hear. They don't hear. Well, what happened, Pastor? Well, what happens is, is that you can plant the best seeds you want to, but the ground got to be broke up. The ground got to be ready. You ever try to tell your children something? They said, you ain't telling them nothing but right. You ain't doing nothing but trying to help them. You trying to keep, you know the lick that they getting ready to, you, oh my God. You, Cause you love them, you don't want them to catch that baby. You ain't never took no lick like that. You, you don't know. They won't hear you. He says, I'm an apostle by the will of God unto the church of God, which is at Corinth with all the saints which are, are, are in Achaia. This was Greece. He says to them, Mother, I'm in 2 Corinthians 1 and 2. He says, Grace be to you in peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. Blessed be God, even the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. You see how he lifts up God. He does not lift up himself because he knows that all of his help, Tara, come from God. He has placed his confidence and his trust and his faith in God because God has never failed anyone. He says, and from the Lord, blessed be God, the Father, and the Father of mercies and the God of all comfort. Now, why would you need mercy if you was doing everything right? Why would you need mercy if you was doing a hundred? The only people need mercy is the one that can't, oh boy, I run up out of here. The only people that need mercy is the one that can't stand justice. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for letting me know I can't stand it, God. I can't stand justice. I need your mercy. He said he's the father of all mercies. In one place, he said that his mercies are new. Didn't he lay the devil? Every day. He's so faithful. And that's what I'm counting on, Brother Alex, God's faithfulness, not man. I've taken my eyes off. And the thing about it is, we are counting on something that has been crucified. Because Paul says, know ye not that as many of you were baptized into Christ. He talked about when you believed, God took you out of the old. He, he baptized you into Christ. Now you are part of Christ. Now Christ is your life. That old man was crucified with Christ. He's dead. He's gone. You see? But the problem is the body of sin. It's your mind. 
It's your mind. Okay, you don't think I know what I'm talking about. You ever heard a song and you're, thank you, Jesus. I ain't got to finish it, though. Mm -hmm. The OJ put it real good. They say, your body's here with me. Your mind's on the other side of town. Thank you, Jesus. That's how come a good saint, back when we first got saved, they remember? A good saint, every now and then, they said, they, they said loose the mind. Loose the mind. The devil try to get your mind. I'm telling you, that's where it's going to start right there. The thought, before you ever do something, there's going to be a thought. The thought precedes the action. And then James says, once the action, it concedes sin. And when sin is true, then it, then it causes death. Causes death. Here the Bible says, the Father of mercy and the God of all comfort. Why would you need comfort if you wasn't hurting? So you, you don't really know how good comfort is until you're hurting. You don't know how good it is not to have an earache until, you, until, you, until the earache gone. You don't know how wonderful it is not to have the toothache until the toothache gets gone. All of us have done this. We know that we need to go to the dentist, but we didn't want to go. And then one Friday evening after the office closed, the pain away stopped working. That stuff we had been putting on, it didn't work, and we couldn't wait for it to open on Monday morning. So you can take, pull all of it. Take all of it. The God of all comfort. So what this means, Sister Cynthia, is I'm going to go through some things. I'm going to go through some things. See, ain't nothing like a lick that you wasn't expecting. You see? And so I don't mind coming here on Wednesday evening, see, because I'm, I'm getting ready for a leak. See, ain't no use of me thinking things happening to other folks, ain't nothing going to happen to me. Yeah. Ain't no use of thinking about it, but, but you see, I, what I'm believing, Friday, is that the God that I serve, yeah. that he's able, able to keep me from falling. I'm, I'm believing that, God. I don't know what I got to meet. I don't know, God, what's going to happen, but my confidence and my trust is in you. That you, God, can take me through. Oh, yeah. And that's the reason he says that we don't have to mourn like other people. Uh, Lady Deborah and I both have lost our fathers. We sat up there talking the other day, and I told her, I said, well, I said, we ain't got no dad. I said, soon we ain't going to have no mama if we outlive them. Mama getting ready to turn 90, mine 84. God been good. God, God been good, y'all. God has been good. God's been good. And so uh, I'm going to say just like Job said when his wife, because they, everything was wonderful as long as they had the gold card and as long as they was taking trips across. Now, as long as everything was one put and everything. But when things got rough, he had the wrong one. When things got rough, she said, go curse God and die. And he told her, the woman, you speak as a foolish woman. God's been good to us. All these good years we done had. Oh, God done done. Now things done got bad. Now you think it that Joe said, oh no, he said, though he slay me, yet will I trust him. I don't know what's going on. It ain't for me to trickle and to figure out what's going to happen or how it's going to happen. This God business right here. He's in the results business. However it turn out, Cricket, it's up to God. It's not up to me. My part is to trust him. Paul said, I know in whom I have believed. And I believe he's able to keep that which I have committed under him. So he says here, look at verse 4. Who comforted us? Talk to him, Paul. Sometimes you have to get folks straight. You see, I'm going to tell you something. Now, people try to lift all of us up. Don't let nobody hype you up. The young folks that gas you. Don't let nobody hype you up like you, you know, if you into your ego and your pride and everything, you want to hear that. You know what you got. You know you really holy. You know you really just, hold on, baby, don't be lifting me up or whatever. I'll fall just like anybody else. And Paul is trying to let them know, you're bringing me all your problems, but I got problems just like you got. Just like you got. I believe Paul, Paul lost everything for Christ. I believe he lost his wife, Lady Deborah. Because he was a part of the Sanhedrin. And you could not be a member of the Sanhedrin if you wasn't married. But you don't hear no more about no wife after God saved him. After God uh, met him on that Damascus road. And he even asked him one time. He talked about the situation. He said, don't I have a right to lead a wife around like Peter? But I tell you what. It depends on the call that's on God, that God got on your life. But I want you to know something, Mother. I know you can be a witness. Everything you give up, God will thank you, Jesus. God, God, God will cover that just like you. You don't even miss it. 
You don't even miss it. Let me tell you something. I love the people that the church I was in over there. I love them people. I love them, but they didn't love me. I can say it. I don't care what you think about it. I know they didn't love me because how they treated me after I left. But I loved them. I did. But I want you to know. And I went back. I would go back to visit and start doing everything. But I was there one day. And the way they treated me, the spirit told me, said, you don't have to come back no more. You don't have to go and read the God. God will comfort you because see, the thing about it, Lady Deborah, is there's no abuse in God. God. God will bless you where you stop abusing yourself. And what I know today is it ain't you abusing me. It's the fact that I keep showing up for you to abuse me. God will give you some real good walking around since I know what I'm talking about. I ain't telling you what I heard or what I read. I know what I'm talking about. And so Paul here tells them that he is the father who comfort us in all our tribulations. I'm in verse 4. Now, look, watch this right here. Somebody told me when I was going through, they said, Vandal, yo, what you're going through is not for you. I never forgot that. Dominic told me that from St. Louis. He said, what you're going through is not for you. I don't know how many times I've been blessed to, to share what I went through or what I'm going through with other people. And, and, and it just, it helps them. It, it, they say it helps them. He says, he comfort us, Brother Alex, that we may be able to comfort them which are in any trouble. People are going through. People are going through. And when God bless you to share your pain with someone else, you see, because it's, it's not, Brother, Brother Brimley told me this right here. He said, Pastor, he says, I've had people that I talk to every day that have lost children like that. And he's saying, they don't know how much that it helped me. You see, shared pain, shared pain, but you got to be able to, I, you, when you just telling me old stuff that you heard, like, well, you know, God, he's in a better place and, and all that. But when I know that you know, what you talking about. And you've been to that dark place that I've been, but yet God brought you out and you still got your sanity. You still, let me tell you something. Grief will run you crazy. Grief will run you crazy. And it don't never just completely go nowhere. Because you just can be riding your mama, your dad, look here, my dad, he ain't been dead for three years. But, but I think about a month ago, a friend, I was just riding along, man, and just went to crying, man, and talking to us, I said, I miss my dad. That thought come in that they gone and you ain't going to see them no more. But God will comfort you. But you know what? If I hadn't gone through that, and that's the reason an uh, old preacher told me, Brother Alex, he said, don't never preach above your experience. Don't preach above your experience. And so I ain't never tried to tell nobody about how they supposed to feel about their daddy being dead until mine died. My, my mama living for us, I know. I ain't never tried to tell nobody about that. I don't know what they feel like. I really don't. But now I probably will. And at that time I'll be, but, but what you go through, God comforts you. Will he comfort your mother? God will rock you and God will take care of you. And this is what I love about him, mother. Every now and then, he'll make it so that the people who you helped, when you go to them, they like you talking Spanish. It's like they don't understand nothing. They ain't got time. Look, I'm going to get back with you or whatever. And you're looking at them, but don't get mad at them. What God has done is he's taken you onto himself. He said, this one right here belongs to me. I'm not going to let nobody else come with you. I ain't going to let nobody else talk to you. I'm going to take care of you for myself so that you'll know that you know that you know that can't nobody do you. Can't nobody do you like Jesus. I can't nobody do you like Jesus. Look, I'm going to tell you something. I, I've, I've been down. I've been up. I've, I've been through all kind of things, uh, uh, cricket since God saved me in 1980. But ain't nothing been able to make me say that God ain't real. That God ain't real. Because even in all, in the dope house, the crack house, or this and that, God yet held me where I couldn't let go. So he says in verse 4, Verse 4, he talks about, the, he comforts us. I'm verse 5. For as the sufferings of Christ abound in us, so our consolation also aboundeth by Christ. Let, let me go down to verse 7. And I hope for you is steadfast, knowing that as ye are partakers of the sufferings, so shall ye be also of the consolation. 
You see, as a minister, I always have to keep in mind, Vanda, you're not the only somebody that's suffering. You see what I'm saying? I hate that about preachers and pastors and everything. They got their program, they got their vision, they got their plan, and all they want to do, Madeline, is for you to work and do this vision and plan that they got going on. And you don't know what's going on with me. And then when, 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 I'm, when I'm dealing with what I'm dealing with, because you ain't helping me none whatsoever, then you get mad because I can't come to church, or I can't do this, I can't do this. You don't know what I'm going through. You see what I'm saying? You got, you got some Cynthia back there. She's dealing with her mother. Is it aging in her last days and everything? But then you don't want to consider that. All you want to consider is what you got in your mind and what you want. And so, y'all, I'm glad. Like I said, I'm glad that I've been here 16 years because there's so much that I got to learn and so much in order. And my only purpose for doing this right here is God help, God help me so I can help them. You got to fix me. You got to fix me where I can help them because if I'm messed up, then I'm just going to mess them up. And y'all, we need help. We need help. But I want you to know, Lady Deborah, that these 16 years, God's been faithful to us. God, God been faithful to us, and he's taught us, and he's brought us, and he's kept us together, and he got those that wanted to. Huh. Thank you, Jesus. So he says in verse, where am I now? Verse five, verse uh, seven. Knowing that as you are partakers, so also shall you be of the consolation. Look at verse eight. For we would not, brethren, have you ignorant of our trouble. Now think about y'all. And y'all might not remember all the first Corinthians. All he is doing, dealing with their trouble. But somewhere down the line, you got to get people straight. Come on, y'all. I've seen it too much. You got so many black mothers that's so messed up. So messed up. My mama, Deborah mama, all of them, they've been they martyrs. Because the daddy was drunk, her daddy was drunk, my daddy was drunk. And so they had to keep the family together and everything. And now they just ain't in no position where nobody can help them. <laughs> Don't ever give up your humanness. <laughs> because that's the only thing can help other people. I can't relate to you as no martyr. I can't relate to you as like you, Jesus, or nobody. Ain't but one Jesus. It ain't none of you. Whether you believe it or not, mama, you got flaws just like we do. I can't help how you do. You did this and you did. You did what you had to do. You did what you had to do. <laughs> you know, I thank God for my wife. This, she's wise. She's a wise woman. Because certainly while I was on crack, she had to keep the family together. But once she made it easy for me, Fred, once that I got off the crack and I started taking my position again and everything, she allowed me. I had been absent. It was her choice. She could have said, you've been gone and everything. I'm going to be the man. Come on, y'all. But she allowed me to take my rightful position. Now, the Bible says that God is the head of Christ, Christ is the head of man, and man is the head of woman. God ain't never made no woman the head of the house. Now, you have had to do it because the man was missing, because he was all messed up. But if God bless him to be able to come back, then you're going to have to operate in some humility. And it's going to be many times you're going to look at him and say, well, no, you ain't doing that right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's hard. It's, it's, but I ne ne we never said this was easy. And why is it? Because it goes against us. It goes against us. And Mad Sister Madeline, before you got in, I said, I really believe the reason that we meet on Wednesday nights and Sundays is so that we have a better life. We don't come here to get saved. God do the saving. But God comes here to get my mind in the right uh, operating uh, mode so that I can have a good life. Because Satan is out to trick every one of us. Satan is out to trick us. He's out to trick. And what is a trick? A trick is where you make something look good, but it ain't what you thought it was. You've been tricked in. You've been tricked. Boy, it look good. And that's what the whole streets is about. 
Now the streets is undefeated. Ain't nobody never beat the street. But folks are steady going out in the streets trying to do and you, thank you, Jesus. But they sure make it look good. Okay, he says, I don't want you to be ignorant of our trouble which came to us in Asia, that we were pressed out of measure above strength, in so much that we despaired even of life. Not you, Paul. Look what he says in verse 9. Thank you, darling. But we had the sinners of death in our cell. I had a towel up here, but I guess I make y'all hot. Lord, I mean, why don't you wipe his head? He's making me hot. It, this ain't got nothing to do with the Lord. Just, just like Anthony Hamilton, when he, his beard, he had them little knots. I want to just shave that off. Okay, I'm back. He said, but we had the sinners of death in ourselves that we should not trust in ourselves. That, that's the challenge, y'all. See, I, I think the challenge, Sister Madeline, is is, is, is how to straighten you out. I think the challenge is, is how to get you to understand what I'm trying to tell you. I think the challenge is, is to make you act right. But, but, but the challenge is for me not to trust in myself. It's yours, God. I, I, I died on the cross with you. That old man, I have no ideas. I, I, I got no, no, no schemes, no, no methods or something. Any way you said, God, I'm trusting God. And what that means, Mother Brewer, is that in the depths of my heart, I believe that God know better than I do. Let me give you just a small example. You ever been on the highway and, 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 and you didn't get off an exit you went on and you went right on up there and you got up there and it was a traffic jam on the interstate. And you said, man, you get all messed up. You got to sit there, you want to go and everything. But the thing about it is, God could be saving you. You see? But that self-will, what I want, is just so, it's just so strong. He said, but we had in ourselves, he says, that we should not trust in ourselves, but in God, which raiseth the dead. So that means that even if my situation is dead, God is still able to get something out of it. He ever brought you out of a dead situation? If you don't know it, you ought to look at it again. Verse 10 says, who delivered us from so great a death and doth deliver in whom we trust that he will yet deliver us. Ye also helping together by prayer for us that for the gift bestowed upon us by the means of many persons, thanks may be given by many on our behalf. For our rejoicing is this, the testimony of our conscience, that in simplicity and godly sincerity, not with fleshly wisdom, but by the grace of God, we have had our conversation in the world and much more abundantly toward you, to you it. For we write none other things unto you than that which ye read or acknowledge, and I trust ye shall acknowledge even to the end. Let me go on down to uh, verse 16. And to pass by you, now uh, 15, he said, In this confidence I was minded to come unto you, that you might have a second benefit. You see, what happens to a minister is, is that God continues to feed a real man of God. You don't ever have to worry about what you're going to preach. You don't ever have to worry about uh, that maybe you giving more to them than what you should give and keep to, to yourself. As you give, uh, God feeds you with more. And basically, God takes you from glory to glory. Uh, Robert been here for the past 16 years, I guess since we first started. And some, some of the rest of you tiring, and been here, all y'all been here a long time. And you know how that God has changed the message. It's been the same, but, but it's gone to a different level and to a, a different depth. And so Paul here says, I wanted to come to you again in order to share with you uh, a second benefit where, where, where God uh, it has given unto me. 
Look what he says here in verse 16. And to pass by you into Macedonia and come again out of Macedonia. Now he's been across the Asian Sea over in Asia. Uh, but he wants to come back into Macedonia down to Achaia to Greece in order to bring them uh, uh, the word of God. Um, Y'all let me tell you something. I know that what God has done in my life is special. Because I have a burning desire. I have... I, I have a, a, just a burning uh, to bring to y'all the word of God. To, to I try to figure out the be best way to communicate it because I know just like I need it, you need it as well. Be be because it's hard, Sister Madeline. It's, it's, it's hard navigating. And I get the benefit of not only do I see my trouble, I see your trouble. I see your trouble. And, but, 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 and then I see how God yet regulates the mind. And the thing about it is, is that you cannot depend upon people. People are so cold when it comes to your problem. Folks act like it ain't nothing what you going through. But when they go through something, they want, they want everybody to stop what, what, what they're doing. And so, no wonder it is that Solomon said, with all you're getting, get an understanding. Get an understanding. Get an understanding. You know, uh, if you're in a relationship, you need to take note as to who is always giving and who gets rich. I mean, not that you do anything different. It may be all right with you. Because you see, with your children like that, it's most like that's how it's gonna be. But you need to just know what's going on. Because when you get an understanding, you can stand up under anything. What mess you up, Cricket, is when you ain't got no understanding. Now, I come by here this evening just for an hour or so, you know, before the Grizzlies whoop Utah tonight, just, just to get an understanding. That's all. Lord, help me. Lord, help me. Just, just give me an understanding, God, because I know that the power that's working inside of me, it's not my power. Because, Mother, I can't stand nothing. I'll fall out in a minute. I fall out in a minute. And I won't say ignorant. I want to tab something. I do. But you know what? God is something. The, the spirit of God is peaceable. And he's gentle. And, 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 the, and the funny thing about it is folks don't understand. They can't say, why he ain't worried? Why, 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 why he don't want whatever? That's all right. You know what? I can tell you, you won. You won. Because I'd rather have my peace. <laughs> than to get my revenge or uh, 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 be petty with you. See, because resentment is like drinking poison and hoping you die. Drinking poison and hoping you die because if you're walking around bitter and whatever, one thing is is that whoever it was that God has sent around you, you're going to drive them away because don't nobody like to be around bitter folk. Nobody like to be around nobody complaining all the time. I know folk that complain about the same thing the last 20 years. You see what I'm saying? But I'm in Bible study tonight to get some help. I, I, I can admit my fault. God help me. I ain't, ain't no difference between me and nobody else. And Paul is trying to tell them that here. And he said, I, I want to come by. Come, come on my way through Macedonia. Look at verse 17. I got two minutes. When I therefore was thus minded, did I use likeness? Uh, the things that I purpose, do I purpose according to the flesh that with me there should be yea, yea, and nay, nay? But as God is true, our word toward you was not yea and nay. Look at verse 20. For all the promises of God in him are yea and in amen unto the glory of God by us. Look at verse 21. Now, he didn't get a chance to come when he wanted to come. And he's saying, you know how people... Uh, when you don't come, when you said you was coming somewhere, he didn't mean it or nothing like that. And that's what he's trying to tell them is, is that really he's trying to tell them that I was going to come, but uh, God is leading my life. And so I can't, I can't do what I want to do. I've been bought with a price, the blood of Jesus Christ. So he says now in verse 21, now he which established us. I'm Paul. I'm an apostle. I'm your father. In the gospel, he said, but God got to establish all of us. I ain't got no more power than what you got. It's the same God that's holding each and every one of us. Many preachers have made mistakes like that. Not only preachers, I've seen alcohol counselors like that. 
because they was a counselor and they was counseling other folks like that and they thought they was a little better than the folks that they were counseling. Next thing I know, they were drunk. Because it's the same God that helps everybody. Ain't none of us no better. <laughs> the strength gonna come from God, Lady Deborah. It made no difference about you being an apostle or whatever. You, you, you mess up too. He says, look, verse 22, who have also sealed us and given the earnest of the spirits in our hearts. You go to buy something, or buy a house or something, you have to make a, a what do they call it? Put up some earnest money. You got to show me that you're serious. And so we don't have the fullness, but he gave us the earnest of the spirit. What you talking about, Pastor? I mean, sometimes, every now and then, when it get real rough, God will come in. He'll come in. I got a Bible on it. The Bible says that when the enemy come in like a flu, you experience that? The Spirit of the Lord will lift up a standard. Just when you think you can't make it, God will come in and say, don't give up yet. I ain't left you. I'm going to take you through this. Through the storm and through the rain. Though the breakers dash, the songwriter said, why should I feel discouraged? His eyes on the sparrow. He says, moreover, I call God for a record upon my soul that to spare you, I came not as yet unto Cor Corinth. Sometimes you know that if you come, you're going to come in bitterness. Sometimes you know that you're going to say the wrong thing. And Paul, they got sick of him. Sometimes folk can just lean on you to the point. I thank God that Paul was human and that he shared it. Because some folks act like they're just walking on the clouds and they done made it to heaven and they don't have no problem. I had a pastor that said that he and his wife don't never argue. I put my head down. I said, I know you can't help me. I, I know you can't, and I know you can't help Deborah either. Last verse. Not that we have dominion over your faith, but are helpers of your joy. Do not walk past that last phrase there, because it's very important. Because without faith, it's impossible to please God. And so Paul says here, for by faith, ye stand. Clap your hands for the Lord. Yeah. Come on, baby.